In our Sunrise Smart Start, the teenager accusing former Bills punter Matt Ariza is speaking out. Ariza was cut by the Bills over the weekend. CBS's Lilia Luciano spoke with her, and we do want to warn you some of the details are disturbing. Matt Ariza was a rising star, a San Diego State punter drafted by the Buffalo Bills into the NFL. But off the field, police were investigating him for sexual assault. I was having to deal with this horrible, traumatic experience that I never asked for. The accuser, who just turned 18, alleges that Ariza and two other players assaulted her for more than an hour at a party last October. I was bleeding, I was crying, and my friend asked me what happened, and I told her I had just been raped. She wrote in her journal the next day, all I keep replaying in my mind is being face down in a random bed, just waiting for it to be over. Ariza's attorney says his client will be vindicated. What do you think is happening here? He had what we call the deep pockets of these three young men. And uh, I think it's, I still think it's a money grab on her part on behalf of Mr. Ariza. What does that feel like to you? That makes me really sick um, to the stomach. Um, I reported it the day after it happened. I was 17 years old, and I had no idea who Matt Ariza was. Ariza joined the NFL in April, a six-round draft pick. The Bills admit to learning about the allegations in July. He was dropped by the team after the lawsuit went public. Ariza's accuser wonders why his career even got that far. I can't put into words how upsetting it was when I've been facing the consequences for his actions. No criminal charges have been filed yet. Lilia Luciano, CBS News, Los Angeles. Ariza's family released a statement last night saying in part, quote, the rule of law is innocent until proven guilty. That is not our experience. There has been war waged on our son. They go on to say, quote, we have all been canceled, every member of our family. Salacious rumors grew as fact. There are multiple witness reports to deny the claims that are made against him. Back home now, a plea from law enforcement this week to be careful on the roads and watch your speed heading into Labor Day weekend. It comes after two fatal hit and runs in the month of August. Jatira Marsh joins us now live in Rochester with more on what city leaders are calling for. Good morning, Jatira. Good morning, Amel. That's right. One of the incidents that took place happened on Lake Avenue and the other one on the inner loop in Rochester. Both drivers involved in both cases have yet to be located. Friends and family involved excuse me, friends and family in Windsor, Canada are mourning the death of 24-year-old Anthony Trainer, who was in Rochester for a wedding last week. He was hit by a car while he was helping a friend on the inner loop. Frederick Jones, the father of 19-year-old Jared Jones, is begging the public for help. His son was riding his bike when he was hit by a truck on August 3rd. The cowardly driver that hit him stopped and then kept going. That is a very unmanly thing to do. You took a lot from me and you took a lot from our family. We got to use education, but we also got to use some enforcement. We can't enforce our way out of this. We got to change hearts and minds as well. are searching for a black Dodge pickup truck. The truck should have possible damage on the front end of the passenger side bumper. Uh, there are no details regarding the suspect involved in the hit and run inner loop. Ro live in Rochester, Jatira Marsh, News 8. Thank you, Jatira. The state recently passed legislation to allow municipalities to reduce speed limits. City leaders say they're working with community partners like Reconnect Rochester to advocate for reductions in some areas. Now, the motorcyclist killed in, in the Pittsburgh crash last Thursday has been identified. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office says 24-year-old Cully Warner was passing several car cars on Clover Street and lost control when he crashed into a car, making a turn on on Willard Road. He was pronounced dead on scene. Sheriff's deputies say speed could have been a factor. The posted speed limit in the area is 35 miles per hour. 
Jury selections beginning yesterday for the Brighton man accused of killing his wife with an axe. In 1982, James Krausneck's wife Kathy was found dead in her bedroom at their home in Brighton. Krausneck was charged in November of 2019, nearly 40 years after the murder took place. Opening arguments are set to begin next Tuesday. We will continue to follow the upcoming trial both on air and online. And in national news this morning, engine trouble and fuel leaks forced NASA to scrub the launch of the Artemis 1 test flight scheduled for yesterday morning. The night before the launch, a leak of highly explosive liquid hydrogen caused a delay and then a fuel line failed to chill one of the engines. NASA now hopes to launch the rocket on Friday, but if they can't resolve the issue, it could be a multiple week delay. Even if engineers can resolve the issue quickly, there's still a 60% chance of a no-go for Friday due to the weather forecast. Now that's down in Florida. Up here in Rochester, it was hotter than what it was in Florida. Is yeah. that right, James? Oh, so hot hot yesterday uh, yeah and so the uh, the engine sprung a leak it sounded like yeah uh, sometimes that's my excuse if I don't want to go on a walk or oh. run outside I say look I just sprung a leak it's not happening today for you personally <laughs> yes. not a vehicle or anything no <laughs> me personally that's my excuse uh, maybe no excuses for you because the rain is holding off this morning for the morning walk a sunrise it was about uh, 20 minutes ago. Now, we're in the 70s. It's pretty warm out right now. Clouds uh, hanging out with us as well, but we are likely dry for, I would say, another two or three hours before rain does push through. So if we do want to get outside, get a little bit of exercise, now is the time to do it because we've got those showers and potentially a few thunderstorms popping up. We will not be talking about rain, though, in the eight-day forecast. As we get later in the week, we'll take a look at the Labor Day forecast at the end of the show. Amel? Thanks, James. Taking a look at the roads this morning, nothing major to report. Some road construction and roadways are closed down, but otherwise 3, 390, 490, 590 are looking clear and your commute into work should be smooth. Well, this is the final week of summer vacation for most students, but school districts are still looking to hire more staff in a variety of departments. Fairport Central School District, among the many other districts across the state, scrambling to fill those vacancies. They held their first hiring fair of the summer, something they hope will help fill positions like bus drivers, custodians, cafeteria workers, among others. At the fair, applicants were able to be interviewed on the spot and even begin their training right away. Fairport students head back to school September 7th, and for those still looking to apply, we have a link to do so over on our website, rochesterfirst.com. Well, here's a, uh, what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. A penguin with bumblefoot, a degenerative foot condition in birds, is enjoying more stability now thanks to a custom orthopedic boot. At the San Diego Zoo, Lucas was diagnosed with discospondylitis, an infection in the discs down the spinal cord, making his nerve muscle control weaker and cause him not to walk properly. Now with the new boot, his waddle is already showing improvements. The boot is cushioned and Velcroed in place so Lucas can fully participate in the colony, climb rocks, swim, and nest. A vet at the zoo says Lucas will always need his therapy shoe. But good to see that he's doing better and his waddle is intact, James. Yeah, back in good spirits, <laughs> right? Even the penguin. Uh, yes, even the penguin. Got to take care of those uh, penguins, uh, which are great. I love the penguins at uh, the Seneca Park Zoo here yeah. locally. They probably don't like the heat, though. Uh, no, they actually don't mind it. They're South African penguins, so I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> they don't mind it. It's uh, the other ones, the king ones that are all the way down in uh, Antarctica. Just, you know, little science. Appreciate AJ it. forecast here uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Real nice stretch here uh, as we get toward Labor Day weekend. Isolated shower or two pops up by Sunday, but we'll be tweaking that forecast as we get closer. All right, James, thank you. And thank you for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is next.